What's up painting friends? It's Stoof here, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do an acrylic painting tutorial of this guy right here. This is Niagara Falls. This is a popular honeymoon destination and travel destination to see this waterfall. Um, one side is the US and the other side is Canada. And uh, this is the painting I chose to make for a painting tutorial today. This was requested about a year ago, so sorry for the delay there. While I have you here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fun painting tutorials like this one coming up right now. Okay, today we're using an 8 inch by 10 inch linen panel. And for our palette, uh, we're using acrylic paints. I have my colors are dioxazine purple, magenta, portrait pink, sap green, bright aqua green, phthalo green, yellow ochre, Phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ozo medium, light Hansa yellow, cadmium free red light, Mars black, titanium white. I also have a cup of water, a few different brushes. Uh, mostly going to be using flat tip brushes today. All right, I'm going to start by dipping my number four flat tip brush into my water and then into my ultramarine blue. You can pick any like cool color to start with there that's like a horizon line really far back in the distance and then we have an angled line that starts about there and ends about half just above halfway from top to bottom and it starts out and it kind of does a curve about here so it's pretty much like this and then it goes like this and it starts to curve down at the very bottom there. So we got that. And then here's the center point on our canvas. We'll just put a little dot there so we know where center is. Uh, the waterfall basically intersects that line. And then halfway from top to bottom on this side is where our little land is. So I'm just going to sketch that out. comes out just a little less than, less than halfway between center and the left side goes down there comes back off of the canvas right over here there's a little motion like that like this and then we start to lose some of the detail here in the mist And I don't want to do the whole bottom part first. I want to get the top, top part of the waterfall first. So this is our land. And it comes in. This is the top of that slope there. Okay. And then the waterfall. So there's center. I'm looking at center on my own reference photo. You could use the grid method if you just screenshot this finished painting. You can add a grid over it and um, reference this for your painting if you want to get it pretty close to how mine looks. And then let's see, here's the halfway point here. The land root is about right there. So we want our waterfall to come just like that. And then here, the center here it comes down like this, and then it comes over like that, and then the water is all coming down here, comes back, makes this horseshoe shape. And then here we have our road, comes down, and then angles over like that to about the halfway point there. Got a little building there, a little island right here. Be a little smaller. 
And then back here, there's like a little dam. I think I want this to come up a bit more. Get some trees in there. Can't see much of this area. It's all kind of covered in mist. All right, we've got another little bit of land right here. A little bit of land. I think I made that come out a little too far. A little land in the middle here. All right. And then down here, we've got some rocks, big rocks. This is all in the mist there. And we got the little boat down here. I got the concept sketch. Now I'm gonna take my number six flat tip brush and we're gonna start with the sky. So I'm gonna take some white, some phthalo blue, and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Good hint of magenta. And we're just gonna go back and forth. Covering all the white space on the canvas. Going in with a little bit more. We'll add a hint of bright aqua green. Put that down here. And go back and forth up to the top of the canvas. some blending, go back and forth. Adding a little more white. Now we can start with the land far in the background. So we're gonna mix more white in with our phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Tiny bit of umber. We'll do a tiny bit of phthalo green and some dioxazine purple. A little bit more umber. Just gonna dip that in the water a bit and I'll add this nice little bit there. So you want, don't want this to be too dark or it's gonna mess up your uh, perception of depth. Now we're gonna blend some white in there. And at the bottom, just start with the white and work that up. Show a little atmosphere. And then we're gonna take some more ultramarine, some more umber, a little bit of th um, sap green. Go back to our purple. Ready for the next section of land here. Let's do a little more ultramarine. And some magenta too. Some more white and ultramarine. 
Mm, guess we don't need some phthalo blue and phthalo green now. Just mix this in there. Let's also mix in a little bit of black. Such a strong black. And just kind of let this fade into that other color. We can build up a little bit of darker sections too. Take some more phthalo. Just starting to build up more contrast as we're getting closer. And then we can take our sap green with our phthalo blue. Put this over here. Let's do a little more phthalo blue. And yep, this can come right up to the edge. The water, kind of blend this into that other color you had. Just kind of let it fade, softly blend. Let's go back and forth, not pressing too hard with the brush. Take more phthalo. More shadows are in here. And I'm adding some ultramarine blue too. All right, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more and then I'm gonna go back and start to add some of the details in there. Now I'm gonna work on the water. So I'm gonna clean this brush off. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue white and a little bit of ultramarine blue, some phthalo green, and some dioxazine purple. But phthalo blue is definitely our most important color here. Trying to leave a little bit of space where we have those islands and things. And here I'm just gonna take some white and phthalo, because there's a nice reflect, actually ultramarine and white. There's a nice reflection right here. It's a little bit lighter. Okay, go back to our phthalos. And I'm leaving little spaces where I have um, like some rocks, islands, little features. And we're gonna mix more purple in for over this side, white. And then we need like a nice deep phthalo or a reflection of the trees on the side here. And we'll go back to our other color. Gonna add more purple. And this is mostly all going to get covered up, so this isn't too big of a deal right now, this area. This area's got that deeper blue. Trick is to work nice and quickly so you can blend everything you need to blend. And we got a little bit of black mixed in with a little more purple and ultramarine right here. Maybe with a little sap green even. Right there, it's pretty dark. And we're just blending. And we're gonna use more 
uh, Thalo and Thalo Blue and Thalo Green. And this here. And we could take some of our bright aqua green for this area. And more thalo blue in there with that. And we'll do more thalo blue for right here. It's pretty thalo bluey. <laughs> More thalo green right there. And there are some, you know, rapids and white water. We're going to add all that in here too. Just not quite yet. Mixing both of my blues again there. Our little islands. More thalo green, thalo blue for in here. And now we can take some white and thalo green. Nice and bright white and just um, a couple spots just to add these, this lighter white and green color because when you have some rapids it kind of fades into this color and then it turns back into the blue. So while you still have some wet paint, it's nice to just blend in these nicer colors. Come back to some ultramarine over here. Ultramarine. All right, that looks good. And now down here, we need lots of thalo green and thalo blue right here. Maybe even a little black. It's really dark here, reflecting this thing. Maybe mix a little purple in there. And also like around the boat, pull this up a little, you can add more ultramarine too. Just make it, it's a little deeper and darker there. And then we can take our bright aqua green with our thalo blue. That's a good color for a lot of the rest of this down here. Let's get it to blend. More bright aqua green, and some white in there. We have lots of this color down here where all the water, white water just like breaks and starts to feed back into this river. Takes purple. Definitely some purple in here, maybe brown. Ultramarine blue, it's brown in there. Or just ultramarine blue and white, even. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just getting that in there before I build up all the mist. This deeper blue right here. Again, I'm trying to work quickly just so I can get these colors to blend into each other. Instead of having to like layer, because I'm using acrylic paint, it's drying pretty quickly for me. 
some more ultramarines on there. And some purple. And some brown. Whoa. Alright, we got that. Now let's take some sap green and I'm just gonna come down here, get this little bit of green visible here along the path. There's some green here for our nice little island. This is where you want to get the shape of the island looking a little better. That looks good. And then you got these islands here. Coming back to my number four flat tip brush. Now I'm going to work on the water, falling water part of the waterfall. So I'm mixing sap green with black and white and ultramarine blue. And a little magenta. Just dipping that in the water so it blends a little better. And I'm just going to start to add some of this, basically from like the top of the falls and then just bring it down in some spots. You can do little zigzags at the top of the falls, you don't have to have perfect horseshoe shape here. Uh, I need more ultramarine blue back here. More ultramarine there. And this whole side is basically ultramarine, a little magenta. can add a little bit of this um, bright aqua green color too. Definitely want more ultramarine blue over here though. Okay. Ultramarine blue and white again down there. And then I'm going to switch to my bigger brush. And we're going to do ultramarine blue with white. Just add this mist in here, kind of covering up a lot of the stuff. I'm just doing like back and forth and then swirling patterns with the brush, brush strokes. Um, once you get down here, if you want to like airbrush it or if it's still a little wet, you can just blend in with the other colors a little bit. And I still need this color for the waterfall on this side. Now you want to cover up the white space and get this waterfall and just holding the brush at an angle, painting the waterfall. Can't see any of that stuff there. And 
over here we want white with some of that portrait pink color. But lots of white, nice and bright over here. Then I gotta go back to our ultramarine. With white mix. Get some of these shadows from the mist. Okay, and then I just wanna use, you know what, we'll let that dry for a bit. Let's go back to our Number four, flat tip brush. And now I'm gonna work on this area. So I'm doing sap green with some ochre. Got some trees in here. Coming down, and I'm just gonna do sap green and ultramarine blue for the shadows. A little phthalo blue in there as well. Got a little bit of this color down here. Then we need more ochre and some yellow. Both of our yellows for down here. Then we need white. Portrait pink, magenta, and umber. And we can add these rocks in here. And we have like a transition into umber and ochre and Burnt Sienna, okay, right here, comes back and down here. Go back to your other color. And we're getting these rocks down here. Then I'm gonna take some umber, blend that in with my um, ultramarine blue. It's gonna give me a nice shadowy color. You can mix it in with some of your uh, phthalo blue too if you want. That's like our shadow for that. And while we got the boat here, I'm gonna take this red and we'll just add the red for the boat. Basic shape for the boat. <laughs> the boat's a little too big. I'm gonna fix that real quick. shadows in here. A little bit more phthalo green in here. And here. And here. <laughs> Let's 
looks a lot better. Okay, good. And now let's get this green up here. Mix some more Hansa with white and that sap green color. And just put this. And then I'm going to switch to my bigger brush. Down here we've got like a road, ultramarine blue and white, a little bit of black. I'm just going to paint that in there. Do a little black right at the edge so we can. that boundary all cleaned up and then we'll go to our blue and white okay we've got the road and now I'm going to take my uh, Thalo green, sap green, black. Just start to add my trees down here. Kind of covering up the road. Do a little more thalo green down there. And we'll let that dry and then we'll start to add some highlights there too later. I'm gonna come back over here. Mix my yellows in with my green. Just try to get a nice green for this area. And I can keep that green. And I'm going to use a smaller brush with that green to add some highlights on our little island. And over here in this island, okay, and then we're going to take some ultramarine blue, just add this building in here, this little gray roads. Kind of become like a lighter, lighter gray right there. All right, good. We got that white space all covered up. And then back here, we're going to cover up these rocks. That's looking good. Now we got all the white space covered up. And I'm going to start adding detail to the background and making our way to the foreground. So we're going to start way back here. I see some water, like a lake or something. So I'm just going to get a little bit of phthalo blue mixed with this ultramarine blue color that we have. And just add this nice little body of water. Okay, and then I'm going to take my light brown color I made and we have some cleared out space over here. I'm just going to add those lines. Got a couple buildings in here. Just adding a couple little shapes just to show that stuff is going on over here. 
Same with right here. Got like a little green lawn and some buildings. Something going on up here too. In the background. All right, now we can add all of these highlights to the little to the little trees in the background. So mixing sap green with a little of my phthalo blue, and I'm just gonna go like this and a little more white in there. Start to add little bumps of highlights for the tops of the trees. And then we're going to add more sap green. Maybe like a little bit of red. Yeah, that's good. And just still adding to the tops of the trees here, some highlights. And you can add some more yellow. These ones in the foreground are not in the foreground, but closest to the river have more yellow in them. Do that a little to these trees too. And these things down here have a lot of yellow in them, so I'll just go down there real quick. Okay, going back to our phthalo green. Back here, with a little umber, and add more highlights to our little trees in the background. Add a little more white to some of them. And then when you get farther back, you gotta mix in more of your phthalo blue. And you gotta make your line, your little bumps a little smaller. And you can start to mix some purple in for the ones way far in the background. Mixing in more yellow for a few of these up here. That looks good. And then I'm going to go back for shadows again real quick. With my blues and my sap green. And I'm just going to add shadows here to help build up some of my depth and 
get this to read more accurately. Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna darken this up a little. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to the water and start to add my white sections of like white water. So I'm gonna start with just white and a teeny tiny bit of purple. And you could use a liner brush here if you want this to be really detailed just going to quickly go with this brush. This is my uh, number four flat tip brush. And I'm just making some squiggly white lines to show that we have some white water or it's hitting rocks or getting caught on something. Definitely have white water in between these rocks. This helps to separate all those different little variations in the watercolors too. Okay, now you can just take pure white and really brighten up the top of the waterfall where your water's coming down in a few spots. You can add some texture here if you're Really laying the paint on thick. up the top in some of these spots, not all of them. Get 
See, that really draws our attention in now. Get some highlights on the mist in here. So the mist part is where a flat tip brush might be a little better for you, or a filbert brush, like a semi-round brush, because um, you might get a little better blending than what I'm getting here. <laughs> And I still need this to like fully dry before I go in and add all that. Um, but what I can do now is move down and I'm gonna mix a little bit of my uh, bright aqua green here and just start to get these, all the white water coming out of the base of the falls. And you can take more of your bright aqua green, just kind of add a few squiggles with that color. You can do some with just your phthalo green. Very pretty. And you can take just like some phthalo blue if you want to darken a few shadows right before the water. The white water. And you can add some uh, phthalo green at the top, right where the water's coming over. And then um, if you take your brush, get all the paint off your brush, and then just do a quick little brush mode works to like kind of blend it like I just did. Then it gives you that really beautiful, right at the top of the waterfall, green color that makes it look like that rushing water. I'm going to do a little more with um, my purple and ultramarine blue, umber and black, need more ultramarine blue. Just want to build shadows a little more. So just very gently pressing it's kind of blending in with my other colors. Do more ultramarine on this side. There we go, that's what I needed. Now I'm gonna to touch up these rocks back here. I'm gonna mix some ultramarine blue with my burnt umber, a little bit of burnt, uh, burnt sienna as well. And just add some little shadows on this side of the rocks. Add a little shadow back in there too. And uh, take some burnt sienna with white. Add your little highlights to the rocks. Okay, and I'm gonna go back with a little more phthalo blue in here. Just make some shadows on the water on the shadowy side of the... And now, 
I'm ready for this mist in here. Uh, for the mist, I'm going to use my larger six flat tip brush. You have to get it really clean, ultramarine, and then we're just going to kind of swirl it around all over the place. And this is why it's really important that everything behind this is dry because we we don't want to blend with all of that stuff. And you're just going to make swirling motions. The paint's thinned down with some water so you can kind of still see through what's behind it. And you can just layer up to uh, build opacity. And highlights, you can uh, just do some pure white, maybe with a teeny bit of that portrait pink color. And just let that sit for a bit and you can layer up some more if you'd like but it looks pretty good just like that actually i might just leave it and then there's a rainbow in this picture <laughs> rainbows are really hard to paint guys the way that i like to do rainbows is take some white thin the paint down and then you kind of just have to go like this with the white get your arc the arc is also hard to get right. It's <laughs> gonna thin this down a little. Okay, so that's like the base part for the rainbow. And then you can just like fade this part out. Once that dries a little more, then we'll go in with the rainbow colors, but it helps to get that little bit of white first because then your other colors are brighter on top of that. Uh, but while we're waiting for that to dry, let's finish up over here. We have another road, so I'm just going to mix some white in with my burnt sienna color. A little more burnt sienna, maybe a little magenta. And we'll just add our road. This just kind of comes right to the edge. Let's come back with our sap green. Mix with a little bit of phthalo green. There's a little bit of that in there. And get some umber. Let's put a little shadow under that. A little bit there. More shadows in here. Can add some yellow, brighten that up. And I'm going to mix a little bit of umber in with these rocks. And then we're gonna mix white with my umber and portrait pink and just add these highlights right here again for the rocks. It's a little section of rock right there. A couple little ledges.
going to mix in some more of the uh, bright aqua green. Maybe a little bit of my ultra, my uh, phthalo blue as well. Just get a little blend of blues in here. Show a little more motion happening. Got a few darker bits of that there. And I'm just going to finish up this boat. on the side there and then I'm just going to use a liner brush because there's a little white uh, mast in the boat <laughs> and I guess I want to highlight this a little bit more Looks good. Gonna do a little shadow along there. And then uh, we got some green, like some phthalo green right here. And sap green. Ooh. Yellow, ultramarine with that little bit of red gone in there, and some black. Make some more ultramarine for this side. And then uh, white with ultramarine. More white. We can get this road. And then I gotta just realize I gotta fix the waterfall shape a little bit. Come over here and just come down right there. Looks like we're going to do the rainbow last. <laughs> so for these, we just got to quickly use the brush. Just go like this. You can add some brown in there if you want to change colors of some of these leaves and more yellow to some of them or 
for Thulu. can do a deeper shadow with umber and phthalo. Just add your shadows all on this side of each tree. Now we can do the rainbow. All right, so we got to clean off the brush really well. Find some red with some white. I tell you guys, rainbows are so hard to paint. So I got that there. Now I gotta clean that off. I just gotta like fuzz, fuzz it out. It's probably a little easier with oil paint, guys, to be honest. Rainbows is the arc shape. You gotta get the arc shape right and you gotta get the colors right. There's just so much. It's so hard to do. Okay, here's this yellow. And I think I want that yellow. Now this one's gotta go right next to the red. <laughs> Clean. Basically, want this all to go away at the top here. All right, next is our green, which is always like a phthalo type of green. Clean it up. Now we can do. Halo. Then you gotta fuzz the edge out. Okay, there is the rainbow. Just wanna Close it out a little bit more. Paint over the top part of the rainbow because we don't like that part. It does not look very good. Basically what I want to do here is I'm just trying to um, get the end of the rainbow to not have like a solid end. I want it to just kind of fade off. Which it's, I'm getting there. And then down here, we just gotta do what we did before to make the misty waterfall. So there is my Niagara Falls with the rainbow painting. All right, guys, that wraps up my painting tutorial for Niagara Falls. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have requests for future painting tutorials, you can leave a comment under this video. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.